Hello, my crafty friends. I am back again for the Not Too Shabby Shop, and I'm going to be using a darling stamp set called Yum Yum. This was a part of the Coffee and Friends May card box. That card box sold out so fast. But fortunately, this stamp set is available as a digi stamp. So I'm going to show you what I did with this stamp set today. I'm also pulling in a stamp set from last month's card box called Lazy Days. I'm going to be using a few of the flowers from that stamp set. I'm using some cardstock called Barely Peach. I love this cardstock and it is great for using your colored pencils on which is what I'm going to be doing in this video. So I'm going to stamp out the hamster, the bottom corner of this cardstock, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of second generation stamping. I want to do some no line coloring. I do want the line of this stamp set, but I don't want it to be very bright so that you can't see it once I'm done coloring it. I'll stamp it up with some Distress Oxide ink called Antique Linen. And I'll stamp it out very lightly on a piece of scrap paper. And then I'll stamp it again on my Barely Peach cardstock. And I'm pressing down really hard this time. It's a very faint line, but you'll be able to see it more clearly as I color it in. I created some masks for the little hamster's arms, and I'm going to stamp a cupcake. This will look like the hamster is holding this cute little cupcake. I'm also going to stamp the flowers now, and I didn't bother to do gen second generation stamping on these, because I'm going to color them in pretty darkly with my colored pencils. So you won't be able to see the lines at all. I'll stamp three of the flowers. And again, I'm sorry it's so uh, faint, but you will see it as I start coloring it in. I'm just holding up the scrap paper there so that I don't get ink on my mouse pad or the, the foam pad. It's not a mouse pad. Okay, so I'll pull off the masks from his little arms. And let's get on with the coloring. So no line coloring can be a little bit intimidating, but I love the result. I'm using my Karen Dash colored pencils for this, as well as my Brass Bullet pencil sharpener. I love this little thing. And I have already pulled out the colors I'm going to be using. I taped down my panel so that I'm not twisting it and making all of you dizzy. And I'm starting out with my very lightest color first. I will have all of these pencil colors listed at my blog if you're interested in knowing which ones I used. So I'm just putting a layer of my lightest color. I want to color in his eyes and nose and freckles just so I don't lose sight of them. So I used a dark brown colored pencil for that. I want his hands to be pink, so I'm adding a couple of different colors of pinks, a light pink and a medium pink. Putting some little pink cheeks on him and blending them out with my vanilla, or my light yellow colored pencil. And then I'm just going to start building up the color. I didn't bother at first putting the fur texture in, but as I build up my darker colors, I am going to draw the line so that it looks like fur. But my second layer is going to be my medium color. I'm putting a little bit of pink in his ears too. And then as I work up to the darkest color, you can start seeing him a little bit better. And this is just a really fun technique to do. Now this pencil here is the magic color <laughs> that's going to add a lot of cuteness to this hamster. This one is called Apricot. And I was hoping that it would be the right color for this hamster, and I just loved how this color looked. So I'm doing little flicking motions so that it looks like fur. And this little bit of apricot color just adds a lot to the hamster. Add some warmth to its fur. And then I just come in with my darkest color. 
and start adding a little bit of shading. But look at his cute little cheeks. <laughs> I'm just trying to define them underneath so that they look like they're a little bit more forward than his chin and his arms and his chest. One of the tricks to using your colored pencils is don't press down too hard and don't overtax your hand. It's not fun to do if you're pushing down too hard and you're gripping the pencil too hard. Just take it easy, go slow, and don't wear out your hand. <laughs> I'm adding even a little more pink to his little feet and arms. I think they look so cute with the pink color on them. And then I'm going to add more color to his belly. Around his belly, I'm adding darker colors just to push that in the background a little bit. And now for the cupcake, I'm adding two different colors of browns. This is the dark brown, and then I go in with a lighter brown. The cupcake liner, I always feel for some reason compelled to color them in green. <laughs> I always do this, I don't know why. And then I just keep building up color on the cupcake. I'm trying to leave the little sprinkles of the pink color. So I'm going around those. The flowers, I'm just using three colors. I'm keeping it very simple. I'm using a light pink, a regular pink, and a red. The red will be my deepest color, just to put it in the shadows. And it's just very simple, fast coloring. I don't want the flowers to overpower the hamster. I want them to be pushed in the background. And now for a little peach colored flower. And then I let this sit for a little bit and I come back to my desk and I just keep adding to it. Next, I'm putting a grassy little hill under him. I'm also drawing in some stems for the flowers and some grass behind him as well. It needed to be a little bit darker under his feet. And now I'm adding a little bit of greenery, some leaves on the stems. But I'm just trying to keep it very simple because I don't want the background overpowering him. And this is where I pull out a pink Jelly Roll pen just to add the pink back onto the cupcake. Now let's put this card together. I'm using a piece of Dahlia cardstock from Spellbinders. I'll attach this to a white card base. And this is an A2 sized card. I cut out my panel with a wonky stitched die. And then I'm just going to adhere this down flat onto the pink cardstock. The only thing I'm going to pop up is the sentiment. And this came from the set. This just says, have the best day. So this could be a birthday card or just an anytime card. Now I can peel off the release paper and attach this up at the top of the card. The last thing I'm going to do to this is add some clear glitter pen over the flowers and the stems and the cupcake. And I just wanted a little touch of sparkle on this. So Jamie, the owner of the Not Too Shabby Shop, is the artist behind this hamster and all of these cute little images from the set. And again, these are available as Digi Stamps, so you can download them and make them whatever size you want for your cards. I'll have the link to the set listed below, as well as to all of the products I use to create this card. Here's a close-up look at the finished card. Isn't that little hamster just adorable? I've seen a lot of the ladies on the design team coloring him in, and they used Copic markers, and I love how the Copic markers look on this hamster too. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and were inspired, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.